Hello guys and welcome back. This video is a long time coming. I apologize, thank you so much for being so patient. But you know, in the last six months, seven months, we've had a, a baby, so many things have happened, renovations around the house, my job changed, so many things have happened that this sort of got put on the back burner and forgotten about. Anyhow, today I wanna tell you a kind of a follow-up on my waxed jacket project. If you don't remember, a while back I went and waxed this jacket I'm wearing right here. This is an old Carhartt that I've had for years and years and years. And it was one of my favorite jackets. It always fit well and it was a great in-between piece, something that worked really well in the springtime or uh, in New England, you know, sometimes in the morning it's cold or at night, even in the summers, I was doing some night work out on the railroad. I was exposed to a lot of different conditions and this thing came in really, really handy. So I wanna kinda go over whether I would do it again, whether I would go through the process, how I would change it, and ultimately how the jacket worked out for me. Now, I was actually really surprised at the reaction to my last video. A lot of people didn't realize that there was such a thing as waxed canvas, and, and people wondered why you would do it. Uh, a few other people criticized my technique and uh, made, gave me crap for using Brita to boil the uh, wax. I was learning myself, and I wanted to try it out, and I figured, what better way to give it a shot than on camera with you? Because if it's the first time you're trying it, you and I are probably gonna go through the same things together. Some people actually reached out and showed me their technique. One guy had a really interesting setup with a uh, an iron that he put upside down, put the can of wax on top. Actually, I think it was a barber uh, wax that he put on there. Anyway, guys, that's kind of the whole idea behind the last video was I was learning how to do it and halfway through I had to stop, order a can of wax, try it again, and, and the process took way longer than I thought it was going to, but the end result, uh, it's, it's standing before you and this is what it came out like. Let's talk a bit about the process itself. Honestly, it was more than I thought it was going to be. I bought one bar of otter wax. I thought that I would just put that on, uh, kind of bake it in a little bit with a hair dryer or a heat gun and let it soak in and that's all I would need. That didn't even do one half of the back panel on this. So I ended up ordering the big can of otter wax. That actually handled the rest of it, but just barely. A uh, few things that I did, I, I went and I did a, a second layer on my shoulders. I figure if rain's gonna hit you, it's probably gonna hit you on the shoulders, the chest area, the top of your back first. I did not do the inside of the collar coming out here. I did the tips, but I didn't do here because wax canvas against your skin isn't the nicest feeling thing. It's, it's a little sticky. It's almost a little oily and kind of wet feeling. I mean, it is dry to the touch. There's no residue or anything like that, but it's not the nicest feeling thing against your skin. So I did not do the inside of the collar here. It took a lot more elbow grease than I thought it would. It was a messier process than I thought it was going to be and the old hair dryer which I stole from my wife to, to use for that project would have been better replaced with a heat gun. I actually don't have a heat gun. I have almost every other freaking tool you could imagine in the garage but I don't have a heat gun. It would probably would have sped up the process a lot more. Another person commented that it's a good idea to do it on a hot day or say you get the you know the stove in your house like really going your wood stove maybe do it in front of that because it just anything that helps that wax melt and sink in. So if I were to do it again I would definitely change the technique. I would upgrade some of the tools, but it was all a learning process and it was something that I was glad that you could see me go through. Now, how about the performance of this thing? Actually, I gotta say, it works pretty well, but I have to be honest with you, if it's going to rain and I see that it's gonna be raining all day, I have rain gear for that, you know? I have dedicated rain gear for when it's gonna be pouring. However, the reason I wanted to do this was because those mornings or late nights, sometimes you don't see a passing shower coming in and it goes by and you know, you might be sitting there just soaked through because it just came and went. And uh, I've actually been caught out with this in that before. A lot of times if you're heading out on track a few miles in, you have no other choice. So uh, oftentimes I just got stuck there and you know, you kind of wait around a little bit, wait for the, the rain to pass. And in that instance, it actually worked really well. You don't see any beading as far as, you know, like you would see on a normal rain jacket where the, the water just kind of falls off of you, but it doesn't permeate and it certainly doesn't sit inside of the cloth and make it heavy and just uncomfortable to wear for the rest of the day. So I think it's probably best for or, you know, just in case scenarios. And if you look at the weather forecast and they're saying it might be a passing shower, I think it's great for that. Now, the main reason I did this was to get the look. I really like the look of wax jackets. And in that regard, I would say it's a solid C. Uh, it did okay, not too bad, but a Filson or Barber or even a Bell Staff jacket just look better because they're waxed from the factory and that's the way they're supposed to be. One of the things that I ran into when I was waxing this jacket was when I melted the wax and applied it, it actually soaked through to the inner layer of cotton here. So 
I ended up with a bunch of weird like like adhesion and and wrinkles that were were coming out because the wax had permeated through and into the second layer and that kind of made these two layers stick together it wasn't really that good and you could pull it apart but and I'm sure it'll just wear off but it's something I wasn't really prepared for and didn't expect as a matter of fact I'm really not even sure how to prevent that in the future so I would say that the look is it's close it doesn't look too bad if you have any stains on your jacket as I mentioned this was an old work jacket that I've had since I was an apprentice it makes them darker and more prominent. I really don't mind that. It is a work jacket. It adds to the whole patina aspect of it. Doesn't bother me, but for you, if you're looking to wax something, I would suggest trying to get those stains out of there as quickly as you possibly can. Now, the big question, would I do it again? I gotta be honest with you, I don't think I would. It really took a lot of elbow grease. It took a lot more wax than I thought it would, and a lot more time. It really, that time and money would have been better spent going toward the jacket that I wanted. Again, this was an experiment. I don't regret doing it, but it was, uh, if I had to do it and I wanted a wax jacket, I love that look, I would look at some of the more reputable places you can buy this stuff from. As a matter of fact, Free Note Cloth came out with a really nice one recently. A lot of companies are making these now, so uh, you can get exactly what you want and it'll look dynamite. So. No, I wouldn't do it again. I, I might wax something smaller, maybe a hat. Somebody out there had said that they waxed the, the brim of their hat to help with the, the water shedding off and stuff. Some other people said that they wanted to wax their boxers. And I'm totally for that. If that's what you want to do, I mean, go for it. Honestly, though, some people are really funny in the comments. I've definitely learned some lessons. I don't regret it. I was glad to show it to you. And that's at least how you do it. Maybe in the future, I'll do another one. Maybe I'll get ambitious and want to try waxing something else. But for the time being, if I want a wax jacket, I'm just going to buy the damn thing. Anyway, guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think about wax jackets in general. Let me know what you think about this wax jacket, because if you like it and it's a one of a kind, I got to tell you, I'll be happy to sell it to you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.